What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to automatically parse receipts using OCR in Python. For example, to track your finances based on the receipts you get from different stores to build an automated billing system. This is what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to use OCR, which is computer vision, a computer vision technique to parse the bills, to parse the receipts that you get from different stores. So let us get right into it. Alright, so for this video today, I have prepared two images of receipts that I found online, you're going to need at least one image that you want to process that you want to parse. And the images I chose, as I said, I found them online are from Costco and from Walmart. And you can see that those are pretty basic generic images, photographs taken with a simple phone or something. They're not professional scans and you don't need professional scans. You can use images like this one to parse the information using OCR. OCR stands for optical character recognition. We're going to use an external API. We're going to send to it images like this one or images like this one. And we're going to get the information that is contained in one such receipt. So we're going to get the actual store, we're going to get the address, we're going to get the individual items, the price of the individual items, the total, the subtotal, the tax, everything that's listed here will be delivered to us in a structured way as a dictionary as a JSON response. So we're not just going to get the text here, the raw text, and then we have to filter the individual, um, the individual pieces of information here, we're going to get a dictionary that contains stuff like the items as a list, and then we get the amount and we get uh, the description of the item and so on. Um, so this is actually quite impressive what we're going to see in today's video. And by the way, this works also with non American non English um, receipts as well. Now I don't know um, if it works with something that has a completely different font. So if you have something like uh, Arabic language or Chinese or something, I'm not sure if this is going to work. But at least with uh, the English, European, German, Spanish, whatever letters it works. So um, I tested this myself with Austrian bills with Austrian receipts in the local source that we have here. And this worked perfectly fine as well. Um, so what we're going to do first here is we're going to open up a command line, we're going to install the requests module, this is the only external module that we're going to need for this because we're going to send a request to the API and the API is going to do all the processing for us. So we're going to say import requests and import um, JSON, JSON is part of the core Python stack. So maybe let's put it above requests here. Uh, and then we're going to say now that we want to get the URL, the URL is going to be HTTPS colon slash slash OCR dot a surprise, I hope this is how it's pronounced This is the API that we're going to, to use today. Um, it is not a sponsored video. So this is not an ad for the API. But this is the API that I use personally, when I have to automate uh, certain things. So oftentimes, when I uh, get receipts from certain stores, I want to track my finances. So I just scan them in with my phone, I just take a picture of them, send them to the API, get the information, put it into a Google Doc sheet, and then I uh, do all the calculations that I need to do. So this is quite, uh, quite handy, API uh, slash v1 slash receipt. So this is the endpoint that we're going to use here. And then we can say uh, the image that we want to send is going to be the receipt one dot PNG. And the response is going to be request dot post. So we're going to send a post request to the URL. Uh, and the data is going to be equal to so data is a keyword parameter here. And the data is going to be equal to API underscore key. And the API key, if you have one, you can you can pass an API key. So you probably have to create an account, you can have a free plan, maybe I don't know, uh, or a paid plan, but you can also just test it, you have a limited amount of um, responses or requests that you can send a day. And then you essentially get the responses and uh, you can work with them, but you cannot do that an unlimited amount of time from the same machine, right? So you have to, to wait, uh, maybe another day or something. So with a test key, you can do it uh, just like that. If you have to do it on a large scale with multiple requests a day with like 20 requests or something or 200 requests or something, you might want to create an account there. Um, but you can do that with a test key here as well. And then we're going to say recognizer is going to be auto. So it's going to be chosen automatically here. And then the ref underscore no is 
OCR uh, underscore Python underscore one, two, three. And then after that, we're going to say that the files are going to be equal to uh, okay, now the formatting here is not very good. Let's add this to a new line. Files are going to be equal to file. And the file is open, opening the image in reading bytes mode. So that's the payload here that we sent to the URL to this API. And as a response, we're going to get data, we're going to get the data that we're actually interested in. Um, and before we now go ahead and send requests all the time, I'm going to save the requests into a pickle file. So into a serialized file, I'm going to save for this import pickle. Um, actually, do we have to do that with pickle? I can actually, I think I can also do this with Jason. It um, doesn't matter. I'm going to do it with pickle here, but I think it's even easier with Jason. So you can do it with Jason if you're a more professional coder than me. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to get the response text and we're going to dump it into a file. So we're going to say, actually, let's do it with Jason. I think it should work with Jason as well. Uh, so res dot text is what we get here as a response. This is going to have all the information and we want to turn this now into a JSON object. So Jason loads, we're going to load the response text and actually we're going to say now this is now the JSON file. So what we want to do is we want to say JSON dump s. So dump into a string the JSON object and we want to dump it into the file. Um, or actually, do we have to provide a file stream JSON dumps? Uh, no, this actually, let me just see what this produces. Or actually, let's dump it into a file. So let's just say dump like this. Let's say with open response one dot JSON in writing mode, SF, JSON dump, and I think this is the way it works, right? Let's see if that works. So we have this response to JSON, it actually worked, there you go, we have this JSON file here, we're going to take a look at this in a second. But before we do that, let's do the same thing for the receipt two dot JPEG so that we have both of them to examine response to Jason, let's run this. There you go response to Jason. So Oh, okay, daily quota exceeded, I think this won't work. Um, but this one worked because I tried, uh, I played around with the code here a couple of times before making this video. So exactly for the second request, this was not enough because the daily quota succeeded. Maybe I'm going to cut this video then in the end, I'm going to add, um, maybe I'm, I can use my phone hotspot to change my IP or something. Uh, but let's work with the first JSON file here first. So let's delete all this here, because that's just for downloading. Uh, let's go ahead and say JSON dot load. And we're going to load with open response one dot JSON in reading mode SF, we want to say JSON load F and we want to save the response into data. So data equals JSON load F and then we can print data. There you go. So this is the response to our first request. So to this image here from Costco. Um, and you can see we have a bunch of information here that we can also extract um, from we can also extract from this JSON file here. So let's go ahead and just say data.keys to see what we have here, what we can actually look at. And you can see now we have the OCR type, the request ID, the ref number, and so on and so forth. The interesting thing for us is now the receipts themselves. So here we have the collection of receipts. So let's go ahead and say data receipts like this. Now, if I run this, you can see we have a list of dictionaries. In this case, we will only have one dictionary because we only uploaded one receipt image. Uh, but you can see we have here a list so we can actually go ahead and not just get the receipts, we can get the first receipt in this case, by specifying index zero. So now we only have a dictionary. And here you can see already we have key value pairs representing the information that is part of the receipt. So you can see that we have this Costco receipt. And the one thing that it doesn't recognize is that it's Costco. So it says that the merchant name is wholesale, which is this string here, and then uh, Thornton and then 629. So this is what it sees on the receipt. 
Um, but then you can also see the address of the store and all that. So we can actually go ahead and say dot keys here as well to see what we actually have here. We have the merchant name, the merchant address, the phone number, the website, the tax registration number and so on. And then we have also some stuff like uh, the currency that was used, the total. And this is the most interesting one, the items. This is a collection of the items that were purchased. So what we can do here now, and this is probably where it gets interesting for automating your billing system for automating your finance tracking uh, is you can iterate over the individual items. So we can do something like items equals data and then receipts zero to get the first receipt that we have here, the only one that we have here. And then we want to get the items. This is a collection. Now I can print the items list here. And you can see we have again, a list of dictionaries, one dictionary is one item. So here we have multiple items, multiple dictionaries. So let's start with a simple message saying your purchase at and then let's make this an S string. Let's say this is the data receipts zero and um, we want to get actually the merchant underscore name. In this case, it's not going to be Costco, unfortunately, because it didn't parse the logo correctly. But we can start with that. And then we can say for item in items. Um, we can do uh, we can say print. And then first of all, the item description, this is going to be the name of the item. Let's put this into curly brackets. So the item description is the item name essentially, and then we're going to add a dash and the price. So we're going to say US dollars, so a dollar sign and then item, and then amount. Or actually, I think we should be even able to do this with currency, we can see if that works in a second. Um, but that alone should already list the purchases. So you can see your purchase at wholesale uh, Thornton or Thornton, how is it pronounced? I don't know. And then we have the individual items and the prices. And let's now see if we can do this with the currency as well. So we're going to say, uh, this should actually be the receipt. Um, no, actually data receipts zero and then currency. Let's see if this gets us the dollar. Yeah, okay, it, it says USD basically. So we can add a space here. And instead of the dollar symbol, we have USD, which is fine. We know that is US dollars. So we have that. And then we can also at the end of this say, okay, now print maybe a dash 30 times so that we have a separator. And then we can say, okay, the subtotal of your purchase is and then we can do something like um, or not something like it's actually the uh, data, again, receipts, Maybe we should we should create an object that is receipt zero, maybe we should say receipt instead of data receipt zero all the time. Uh, however, we can say subtotal. Then we're going to add to that the tax. So instead of subtotal tax, then we're going to add another separator. And then we're going to say the final sum. So the total is going to be whatever the total is. So this is all information that was extracted by the API, you can see now we have this list here. Uh, and we have the subtotal and we have the tax. And of course, we should probably um, include this here. So the US dollar. There you go. There you go. There you go. Let's run this again. US dollar US dollar US dollar. So this works. And of course, this is now just printing the information because I want to show you how to work with OCR and the API here. But combined with a lot of other videos that I have on this channel, I think I have a video on working with Excel files on working with pandas, I have a whole data science series, you can think about a 1000 ways to automate this into something, right. So in this case, I showed you how to get the information, how to get the currency, how to get the total amount, how to get the individual items, iterate over them, get the description, get the currency, get the amount and all that. Um, and even more. But what you do with that is, then you can do a 1000 things with that, right, you can take all this, put it into a CSV file, put it into a pandas data frame, apply some aggregation function, get some statistics, you can uh, take this and put it into a database, you can take this, put it into an Excel file, 
format it a certain way, whatever you want to do with that information, that's up to you. Maybe I can do a video if you guys are interested on how to build a complete um, automated billing or uh, automated receipt tracking system and how to categorize the individual purchases. We can do that on this channel if you guys want to. But essentially, this is how you get the actual information. This is how you get the actual data automatically from your images of your receipts. And then what you do with that is uh, up to you. You can do a thousand different things. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.